Okay, so let's take a look at, you know, once we have the cloning vector ready for, you know, insertion into a, a bacterium, you know, how do we do that? So we're going to call that bacterial transformation. These pencils are terrible. Bacterial transformation. And maybe you remember way back from the first section of the course. So what is transformation? Uh, so essentially it's, it's when a bacterium, I should say uptakes, uptakes DNA from the environment. So, you know, how is the DNA getting into the environment? So in the laboratory, you know, we're putting it in the environment. We're putting it in the immediate environment of the bacterium. So to, to be considered transformation, the DNA must be able to be transmitted to the next generation. So the daughters of the individual bacterial cells that uptake the DNA. So yeah, so to, to, to be transformation, that DNA must be passed to the daughter cells. So it can't be like the bacterium took up some DNA and you know it was lost eventually. And yeah, plasmids can be passed to daughters. So, so by putting the plasmids or the cloning vectors into the bacterium, that counts as transformation. So for bacterial transformation to work, the bacterial cells must be competent. Competent for what? Competent to take up DNA. So competent bacterial cells are ready, are receptive to importing DNA from the environment. So let's call competent cells as cells that are receptive to DNA uptake. And this is something I've wondered about for a long time, and I, I have yet to find a satisfactory answer of, you know, what makes a cell, a bacterial cell, competent. Now we have methods that we can use that can make certain bacteria uh, competent. But why these methods work, you know, I don't think anyone knows. And if someone tells you they know why it works, I think they are exaggerating. So one method involves treatment of E. coli with calcium chloride. So calcium chloride treatment. So using high levels of calcium chloride and combining that with heat shock is thought to form pores in the cell walls and cell membranes of the E. coli. I'm sure a lot of them die during this process. A lot of the cells die, but some of them, the pores, you know, they don't kill the E. coli, but in the pores allow the DNA to get in. Pores through the walls and the membrane allow DNA to get into cell. Another method that is commonly used is electric shock. So the electric shock is thought to work in a similar way. So you mix the bacteria or make a suspension of bacteria, add DNA to the suspension, apply an electric shock to the cells. It's thought to form pores in the cell walls and membranes. Some the DNA gets into the cells. Not all the cells die as a result of the process and those cells that live, well, they have the DNA inside them. So that's all we need to worry about for you know this concept of competency when it comes to transformation of bacterial cells there are two main methods used to transform e coli and these methods might work with other bacteria too and there might be different levels of calcium or different levels of electric shock and there might be other ways to make different species competent but these are the main ways that we would make e coli competent which would be our model bacterium for genetic research so, okay, so once we have our competent cells, we are ready to put our plasmid 
or cloning vector. Sorry, I keep going back between the words plasmid and cloning vector. So put the cloning vector into the competent bacteria or bacterium. So let's say we do that. We mix a suspension of competent E. coli cells with our DNA cloning vector. Some of the vector, some of the molecules of the vector have the insert, some don't as we went over previously. So we'll call, we'll look at three different situations here. Uh, three different bacteria, bacterium A, bacterium B, and bacterium C. Now bacterium A, we'll, I'll diagram a, a rod-like E. coli cell here. Now bacterium A, let's say this is one of the uh, many, many unfortunate bacterial cells that did not uptake the vector. So no vector, no vector, no insert. So this bacterium right here will not grow, assuming the, the competency, of, assuming the process of making it competent did not kill it. So uh, even if it survived, it will not grow on medium containing antibiotic. So let's say the vector has the antibiotic resistance, has a antibiotic resistance gene to the antibiotic ampicillin, which is a common antibiotic used in research. So will not grow on medium containing anti the antibiotic ampicillin because it doesn't have the vector, which has the antibiotic resistance gene and allows cells, bacterial cells, to resist, so let's say, this antibiotic ampicillin. So bacterium A will not grow, and any, any bacterium like bacterium A will not grow on the medium. We'll call this selective medium because it has an antibiotic and it selects only for bacterial cells that have the vector. So bacterium B, now this has vector only. So it's one of those, you know, vectors that, you know, we opened up with Hindi 3. We tried to put the insert into the Hindi 3 uh, site of the multiple cloning site, but that vector just closed it up on itself. Uh, it doesn't have the insert. So vector only, no insert. Well, having the vector, and I'm not diagramming the bacterial chromosomes in any of these bacteria. So remember, so here's the multiple cloning site. It's intact, and that multiple cloning site was embedded within a LACZ gene with this particular vector we're talking about. So you probably can't read that. So I'll put it right here, LACZ plus. It's intact. This vector encodes a functional copy of the LACZ gene. It also has the antibiotic resistance gene. So antibiotic resistance over here. In the previous video we talked about androgen receptor. This is not this does not stand this does not stand for androgen receptor. It stands for antibiotic resistance gene. So this bacterium in bacteria like this bacterium that have only the vector will grow on medium containing ampicillin. Why? Because it has, you know, it has the vector and the vector has the resistance gene that the bacterium needs to grow in the presence of this antibiotic. So, okay, let's look at, let's take a look at bacterium C here. And I didn't mean to diagram it bigger. Bacterium C should be the same size as these other bacteria. But bacterium C has vector and insert. Okay, so let's say that's where the insert is. Okay, we, we succeeded. This copy of the cloning vector has the insert in the multiple cloning site. And there's the LACZ gene, which is going to be LACZ minus because of the presence of the insert in the multiple cloning site disrupts LACZ, disrupts it. So it no longer encodes a functional protein. So bacterium C will also grow just like bacterium B 
Bacterium C and any bacteria like Bacterium C that has the vector and the insert in the multiple cloning site will grow on medium containing ampicillin because it has the antibiotic resistance gene over here. So what we need now is a way to distinguish between these two. We don't need to worry about this. We included antibiotic in the medium, so we're not gonna see any of these bacteria growing. But now we need to distinguish between these two types because we want this one, right? We want these bacteria that have the copy of our uh, fragment of interest inside the cloning vector. So. In addition to ampicillin, in addition to putting ampicillin in the medium, we can put a compound called XGAL. And this is the short abbreviated name of the compound, which is a, a long complicated name. But this compound called XGAL is colorless. So it's colorless in the medium. And It can be metabolized by LAC-Z. So functional copies of LAC-Z, the protein, can break down XGAL into a compound, let's say this is colorless, into a blue compound. So just normal blue compound, like with our eyes, like my shirt here, blue plus galactose. And I'm pretty sure it's galactose here because that's where the gal comes from. But the important part, it takes a colorless compound, metabolizes it into the blue compound plus galactose. Now the blue is important. So if we see blue, a blue color associated with a bacterial cell, you know, we'll know that bacterial cell has a functional copy of LAC-Z and the functional copy of LAC-Z is coming from the plasmid. Also note that the host, the bacterial host that we're, we're the competent bacteria that we're putting these plasmids, these cloning vectors into, has, has, its, fun, has its native copy of LAC-Z on the bacterial chromosome mutated. So native LAC-Z plus mutated. So we don't have to worry about, about the native copy of LAC-Z. Any blue color right here from a functional LAC-Z has to come from a functional LAC-Z contained in the cloning vector. <clears throat> okay, so let's review. Now we're gonna wrap things up here. We're done with almost done with restriction enzymes and cloning DNA fragments. Uh, just one more thing we need to look at as we summarize everything here. Let's try a new pencil. Let's hope it doesn't break. I'm gonna try not writing so so much pressure, and I'm putting so much pressure on the tip of the pencil. So first step, digest the DNA insert with the restriction enzyme. In this case, we're using Hindi 3, but we could use anyone as long as those restriction sites are in the right, uh, re restriction endonuclease recognition sites are in the right spot. We can use any enzyme. Uh, also, as long as that recognition site is in the multiple cloning site of the cloning vector. Step one, digest the insert with Hindi 3. Step two, digest the vector with Hindi 3. Step three, ligate the vector and insert, or ligate the insert to the vector. Step four, transform competent E. coli. Step five. Okay, so now we have a suspension of, of competent E. coli that, you know, we tried to get the, we tried to get those E. coli to uptake the vector that had the insert ligated. Some of them took up the vector with the insert. Some of them uh, took up the vector only, and some of them didn't take up anything. What we're going to do is spread transformed, I put transformed in quotation marks because not all of the cells were transformed, spread transformed E. coli onto selective medium. So what is the selective medium? It's selective because it contains ampicillin, the antibiotic that, you know, our 
cloning vector has the antibiotic resistance gene 2 plus XGAL, which is going to give us a, a color, um, different color for the bacterial colony depending on whether or not the insert is in the vector. Okay, once we spread, we incubate overnight at 37 degrees Celsius because this is the temperature that E. coli grows best at. And then seven, we check the colonies. Check colonies next day. Check color of colonies next day. And hopefully we have colonies on our plate. You know, this is a petri dish with solid medium containing ampicillin or semi-solid medium containing ampicillin and exgal. We spread the colonies or spread the cells out on the plate, incubated the plate overnight, and we let those individual cells grow into colonies. And then, okay, we look the next day and we got no colonies, right? That's bad. No, because this is a, you know, hypothetical experiment, I'm going to draw some colonies in here. Okay, let's say we have, you know, a whole bunch of colonies here. And I have a handy blue, well, I had one, where'd it go? Pencil somewhere. Here, are you? Okay, here you are. Okay, and some of these are gonna have a nice blue color. And these blue colonies are really intense, which leads me to believe that, you know, the X-gal compound is imported into the bacterial cell. from the medium. Okay, so we have a whole bu a bunch of blue colonies here. Uh, let's say we have one, two, three, four white colonies and a whole bunch of blue. So each of these colonies has like a million cells. They were all derived from one, one cell that we originally spread at, at each of these points onto the medium. So they're all genetically identical. If we want a bacterium that has the cloning vector, you know, what would we pick, blue or white? For both of these, both of these have the cloning vector, right? Because in order to grow in this medium, the bacterium needs, it, needs the cloning vector because the cloning vector has the antibiotic resistance gene. And this antibiotic, this plate here has ampicillin plus XGAL. Okay, so either one of these has the cloning vector, but which one, just comparing these two, would have the cloning vector plus the insert in the multiple cloning site? This one, so I'm gonna put a little star here. We want the colorless, or I can call them white, colonies. Why? Because the blue compound, remember, blue compound, equals a functional, means a functional copy of LAC-Z is present. So LAC-Z plus, plus is present. And when is a functional copy of LAC-Z plus present? When the insert is not contained in the multiple cloning site. Okay, so a blue colony means that the bacterial cell that gave rise to the colony took up a cloning vector without the insert in the multiple cloning site. So we want to skip, ignore all those blue colonies. We could probably just take this one right here. This has got like a, say a million cells in there. Each one has at least one copy of the plasmid. So this is great. The bacterial cell here made a million copies of our DNA fragment for us. Uh, now we can take this colony and we can transfer it to a liquid culture, a giant liquid culture, and we can get trillions of copies of our DNA molecule. And you might wonder, well, why would you do this? You know, we can use PCR, right? Why don't we go through all this trouble where we could use PCR? Well, PCR is kind of expensive, right? To make trillions of copies of a DNA molecule by PCR, it, it's relatively expensive compared to this technique right here. Plus, PCR... Um, has a higher mutation rate than, let's say, E. coli does. E. coli has been evolving for, for what, billions of years, or millions of years at least. 
Um, we could look that up and see what the correct estimates are. And, you know, it has a very low uh, mutation rate when it's replicating its DNA. So, so putting a DNA clone, there are advantages to using transformation to clone a DNA and get many copies of your target DNA molecule um, by this process as compared to PCR.